We've already looked at a couple of descriptions of social justice. We learned that the principles of Catholic social teaching name traits of a just society, and Bill Quigley describes social justice as living in the economy and politics as though respect for human dignity matters enough to shape our priorities. Starting with today's lesson, we will look more closely at social justice as described in Catholic tradition, and as the Catholic tradition enters into dialogue with other prominent positions in the debate in the context here in the United States. Concern for justice in society has roots in ancient Greek philosophy. For thousands of years of Jewish tradition, and it had already become a concern of Christian theologians during the Roman Empire. In society today, justice is one of those things about which people disagree and debate. So we should expect this among our classmates as well. Our study of ethics encourages us to learn how to understand, respond thoughtfully to the positions other people take when we ask what justice requires of us in social life. St. Thomas Aquinas describes three dimensions of justice, commutative, distributive, and general. He calls the common good the telos, or the ethical goal of a just society. The Second Vatican Council describes the common good as the sum of those conditions of social life that allow social groups and their individual members relatively thorough and ready access to their own fulfillment. In a free and democratic society, a person gains access to the goods of social life through social participation. This includes economic life, education, family life, and political participation. Catholic teaching on social justice builds primarily on these two ethical premises, that all human beings have intrinsic dignity or worth, and that people contribute to others' fulfillment and to their own fulfillment through social participation. Social participation is not the same thing as voluntarism. It speaks more broadly of human beings' mutual dependence and our interdependent destiny. As a society, we rise together or we stumble and struggle together. David Hollenbach, a professor of Christian ethics at Boston College, writes about how we should think about Thomas Aquinas' classic threefold elaboration of justice in the context of a free and democratic society like the United States. Participation becomes the central concern of justice in a free and democratic society. Community of justice, he says, calls on people and parties to treat each other justly. When others do not honor our dignity in interpersonal relationships, we experience this as domination. Distributive justice looks at how social institutions distribute benefits and burdens. When people cannot develop and strive toward their fulfillment because of inordinate burdens or because they lack access to the goods of social life, they experience oppression. Contributive justice takes the place of what Thomas Aquinas called general justice and focuses on the value of participation. When people cannot contribute to society's major institutions like the family, the economy, or government, they experience marginalization. In today's class, we'll focus on commutative justice, justice in our interpersonal relationships, relationships with groups, or in our contractual relationships with corporations. Catholic tradition looks at respect for human dignity as an ethical responsibility for all people. This also means we respect people's consciences and the freedom that a person needs to form and follow their conscience. In a relationship, we respect someone's conscience through dialogue and by searching for a place of mutual agreement. When people and groups fail to respect someone's human dignity, we see a number of problems like fraud or breach of contract, disparagement of people because of their race, age, sex, ethnicity, culture, or creed. We see double standards where some people get better treatment and others are treated worse. Commutative justice in Catholic tradition does not look only at a person's decisions, but also on the quality of these choices and the extent to which they are made out of actual freedom rather than because of coercion or because people feel forced into a situation where they could not survive otherwise. We can use the three-part elaboration of justice to compare Catholic approaches to social justice with other approaches prominent in the United States. Catholic tradition holds for a vision of justice that includes all three parts. Libertarianism, however, claims that community of justice should be the only thing we consider when we look at whether a society is just or unjust. The central value for libertarianism is respect for individual liberty. But liberty is seen not as a goal or a telos. Instead, libertarianism takes a deontological approach. Liberty is seen as a trait of each just social transaction. Robert Nozick, 
a political philosopher, describes libertarianism's principle of justice with this phrase, from each as they choose to each as they are chosen. Libertarianism does not accept any imposition on personal liberty. People have an ethical responsibility to avoid interfering with others' liberties, but this is chiefly a personal responsibility and only secondarily a concern of government. When we look at the issues of racism, sexism, and Islamophobia, libertarians see this not as a social issue, but as a personal responsibility. People have a right to decide how they want to treat others, and society cannot prevent discrimination without placing too great a burden on others' freedoms. To compare libertarianism with Catholic conceptions of community of justice, Catholic approaches focus not just on the quality of interpersonal transactions, but also on their goal. It seeks to move society toward greater interpersonal respect. Catholic approaches to community of justice are not concerned exclusively with liberty, but are also concerned with other personal goods essential to a person's dignity, such as education, social participation, and quality of life. When we look at this list of violations of community of justice, the one that all libertarians would consider a problem is fraud or breach of contract. Some libertarians also raise concerns about sexual harassment and families' freedom to raise children, according to the values of their tradition. But most libertarians promote responses to these issues that focus on individual responsibility, because they are concerned about government intervention that interferes with personal liberty. To help us clarify our own understanding of community of justice, we'll be looking at some case studies during class.